Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are on the planet. I just want to reach out and say welcome to Ignite Humanity Live. I'm your host, J.B. Owen, and I'm happy to be here because we're talking about humanity, we're sharing about humanity, and we are igniting humanity in ways that has never been done before. This show is all about sharing with you ideas, solutions, uh, different ways that you can ignite humanity in your life, and then you can go out and ignite the lives of others. We're always looking for ways to share because it is a ripple effect that expands out over uh, time, over provinces, over states, over countries, over entire continents as we move towards creating a new paradigm and a new existence for each and every one of us in a positive, powerful, encouraging, and motivational way. And we bring guests on the show to talk about what they're doing in their lives to ignite humanity. And it all started with a powerful Ignite moment. Somewhere in their life, something transformed, something happened, something awakened them and sparked a new idea that they decided they were going to go out and do something to help others. Ultimately, each and every one of us wants to help people. We want to do something amazing. We want to uplift the lives of others. And so incredible moments of people's lives, they decide that that's going to become their mission and their purpose, and they're going to infuse their vision into making sure that they do something good. And so we bring those guests on the show to give them exposure to you and to give you exposure to them so that you can see, you know what, if they can do it, I can do it too. If they can get there, if they can get through it, you know what, I probably can do it also. And we want to create the ripple effect of impact and inspiration in you and others. Well, today's Thursday, so that means it's Solution Day. We're talking about solutions. Ways to create solutions in our lives, in your lives, in the lives of others. Little tiny incremental micro movements that can move us forward, create powerful, big, massive solutions on a big ripple effect. And that's what we're all about. So join us for the next 28 minutes as we talk about ways to ignite humanity with our powerful guests. So today we're super excited because we have two guests. We're always evolving and we're always expanding. In fact, one of the principles of igniting humanity is evolution and expansion. And so today, a very exciting. We have two guests on the show and they're going to share with you. Katie Allen and Allison Prince have co-founded Be The Change Yoga, a center for yoga therapy and higher education in Orange County, California. They've been working together for over 16 years and have created a successful, nourishing, working relationship that has enriched both their lives as well as impacted the lives of thousands of people. Together, they've evolved from young women to passionate business owners, to sharing their love of yoga, to opening a brick and mortar business, to becoming moms, and now envisioning opportunities for community healing and human flourishing. They have successfully implemented yoga therapy and health education programs in hospitals, health systems, and federally qualified community clinics. They're igniting humanity, and they're here with us today. Welcome, ladies. Welcome, welcome. Come on in and welcome to the show. So happy to have you here. So blessed to have you show up. Thanks for being here and really pouring into us how you guys are igniting humanity. Thank you, JB. It's such an honor to be here with you this morning. Thank you yeah, so yeah, much thanks. for having me. Hey, Allison, happy to have you here. So this is going to be fun, the three of us gals talking it up. Well, let's start a little bit at the beginning. Katie, was there was there a moment where you and Allison knew this is what we were going to do to make a big impact on the planet? Oh, my gosh. We've always known that. We've worked together. We used to work at this beautiful wellness center owned by someone else, and we just felt that it was our calling. It was our calling to hold space for others, to find and create a sanctuary for people to come together. And we really want to do it in our own unique way. You know, so that was our night moment so many, so many years ago. And just planting this little seed and then watering it and tending to it and actually birthing, you know, our own beautiful sanctuary. We have these lanterns from Morocco and these doors from Rajasthan from the 1800s. And you just feel like you're going back in time, stepping out of the chaos of the modern world and like entering a sanctuary in the middle of Orange County. <laughs> yeah, we watch people just transform. We watch them come in and being stressed and agitated. And then they walk out just floating. And that's the magic of what we are so blessed to be able to do. Well, I like that you said the word unique and you're doing it your own way. Allison, tell us a little bit because we all feel like, oh, I should maybe do it the way I've been told or do it the way somebody else is doing or maybe fit the mold or be cookie cutter. 
you guys actually really flourished a lot during the pandemic. And since you've really kind of created your own niche, share with our viewers the importance of uniqueness and being yourself when it comes to your business. Yes, we've learned over the over the many years to be our most authentic selves that, you know, if you're not authentic, it's not going to come across as the, the amazingness that it is. So, you know, we share yoga therapy and all the tools of natural health with our community. And we're so grateful in a world where, especially in Orange County, where a lot of yoga is hot yoga and power yoga and wearing the tight outfits. And there's a place for that for sure, but there's a misperception that that's what yoga is. And we're here mm -hmm. to teach everyone that if you can breathe, you can do yoga. So please jo join us. <laughs> well, you make me laugh because years ago I went to Bali and I was so excited because that was, you know, I was, thought I was just going to have the yoga mecca. And it was, I called it yoga snob because it was all about what you were wearing and what positions you could hold and how strong you were and how much better you were. And it didn't really feel like that spiritual groundedness that I felt yoga was for me. Yoga was a safe space. Yoga was an internal exploration. And when I went there, I felt like it was all about the process. It sort of lost its uniqueness. Can you share a little bit about anybody who has misconceptions about yoga? Really, what is the essence of it versus what we think it is? Hmm. Oh, gosh, we could go on for hours. Go ahead, Katie. <laughs> sure. Well, a very simple way of defining yoga is awareness, breath, and movement. So the first step is awareness, the ability to actually harness the fluctuations of the mind, to focus the mind in a singular direction, to be mindful and be fully present in whatever it is that you're doing. So it doesn't even need to include the postures, right? So a paraplegic could practice yoga because the first step is awareness. The second step is breath. It's like replacing that short and shallow unconscious breathing with like long and smooth, you know, deep belly breathing, deep diaphragmatic breathing that in turn focuses the mind, regulates the nervous system, improves digestion and reduces muscular tension and actually just resets us back into our home frequency, right? Are allowing us to come back to this space of lightness and ease, you know, so awareness breath and then movement is the third aspect it's like we live in these bodies these vehicles we have to tend to them and we need to move them every day in appropriate ways but as you said the misconception is that yoga is all about the body it's all about look at me in my pose when really it's an internal job and that's why we like to have i like to have the lights low in my class because i want people to look within mm. not look and compare themselves to others on the mat but really look inside and feel what's happening internally to clear away the blockages, the rubbish, the clogged channels in the body and the mind. And then they can tap back in to that sweetness and that lightness. And that's what yoga is. Yeah. And I'd love to add something. Um, there's so many definitions to what yoga is. And one of our favorites is yoga is making the unconscious conscious. And how many hours of our day do we spend in that subconscious mind, like just out of habit doing things and not really present with what we're doing. So yoga isn't just what you do on a mat for an hour a day, but it's all 24 hours a day. Like, what are you choosing when you're interacting with others? What are you choosing when you're eating? So it's this fully conscious way of living. That's yoga. Both of you have described it beautifully, and I actually feel myself more relaxed <laughs> and more aware just listening to your definition of it, because it does remind me of all the years that I was practicing very diligently, that it was about the yogini life, like it was about the consciousness, the awareness, the calmness, the stillness, the beauty. And I think let's relate that to igniting humanity. When people practice this modality, let's call it, how is, do you feel, Katie, I'll start with you. How do you feel that is rippling out into humanity and impacting others? Mm, I love that question. You know, it all starts with, you know, that internal awareness and self-regulation being anchored into a more sattvic or a balanced version of yourself. And then when your internal world shifts, it changes how you interact with the external world. So it ripples out into your relationships. It's like, you're less reactive. You're able to see people more clearly. Like, 
oh, my, my partner's just having a really rough time at work right now and they're snappy, but that doesn't mean that I have to, you know, get snappy too, you know? So you end up having a choice of how you interact with the world. And as a result, we become lighter on others. And then we're more compassionate and additional qualities ripple out that then, as you said, the vibrational field changes because mm -hmm. how we show up directly impacts how others receive it and then they carry that throughout their day. Yeah, it really creates that ripple effect and how, you know, you can walk into a room and there's instant vibration or frequency of someone being angry and then suddenly you're tense and you're angry, you leave the room, you've got that same vibration and, and it just contagiously goes out around versus you're feeling that relax, that peace, that compassion, that empathy for others and that filters out. Allison, let me ask you today's solution day. So is there some key solutions or some little tidbits you can give to our viewers that they can implement right here, right now while they're sitting watching us? I think one of the greatest things you can do and one of the concepts of yoga is like practice and detachment. So maybe five minutes earlier, you detach from your bed and you get up and you just sit and meditate for five minutes. It doesn't have to be this big elaborate thing but just sitting and breathing and thinking about the intention for your day. Cause if you're like waking up with the alarm going and you're 10 seconds behind and you're feeling overwhelmed, that's the energy that you carry through your day. So if you just mm -hmm. sit and be like, I want to focus on confidence today, or I want to focus on patience today. And you set the tone that makes a world of difference. Yeah. Excellent. And Katie, a lot of people feel like meditation is like, I have to have this emptiness. I have to think nothing. I did some training years ago and they were saying like, you're, you, you have to think thoughts. The mind's, you know, act, the mind's purpose is to think. And so having this commitment to not thinking of anything is really the opposite of what meditating is. Can you give people some solutions about that idea that they have to be not thinking anything? Mm -hmm. So according to the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, the definition of yoga is chitta vritti naroda. There's so many definitions as we've already talked about, but that basically means to, to harness the fluctuations of the mind. Some translations would say this means stopping the mind, right? So stopping the fluctuations, but we're living in you know this modern world and how practical is that when you're driving on the freeway? So we use the word to harness, to envelop, to channel your thoughts in one direction. So choosing one object of meditation, whether you're driving, just drive. What's the music that's playing? What's the vibration of the music, right? When you're eating, just eat. Just do one thing at a time and focus the mind on that singular object, and that's meditation. So it doesn't have to be this ethereal thing where I'm going to sit, you know, for a half hour and think of nothing and empty my mind. That's very challenging. So let's start with more practical um, daily ways to sprinkle this into our lives to start to create a little bit more clarity and a little bit more focus. So well said. I think also reactions versus intention is a big one where we're listening to people or something happens or our kids walk up in the room or we're exposed to our coworkers or we're just at a restaurant and there's a complete stranger being more mindful of our reactions and our intentions and what we do and instead of less unaware, I think is also a big part of being in that state of not meditative state, but conscious state. Can you speak a little bit about that? Because a lot of people feel like I don't have time to set aside. And you're also saying it's not necessarily a sidebar in your life. It's how you live your life. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like Katie said, you can prepare dinner more mindfully instead of listening to the radio or the TV, like chop that carrot and be with that carrot. You know, yeah. it doesn't have to be this big elaborate thing that everything you do, just be present with it. And I know it's, it's a process, it's a practice and baby steps to get there. Absolutely. Katie, I know some people are watching, they're feeling burnt out, they're feeling stressed out, they're feeling like a bombardment, maybe even overwhelmed. Do you have some solutions for them that can help them get stepping forward in towards the next version of maybe them feeling like I can help me and potentially help someone else? Sure. So, and this is so common in our society, unfortunately, everyone is depleted. And what is burnout? It's like you're putting out too much, but you're not actually replenishing. So we need to find ways to fill up our cup and to replenish. 
So yes, yoga offers great tools with meditation and movement and stress management, but also Ayurveda, natural health, aligning with the rhythms of nature. So looking at your daily routine, what time are you going to bed? What time are you waking up? What do you do in the morning? What, when are you eating and how are you eating? And that's what's so powerful about Ayurveda is that it teaches us to realign our schedule with the rhythms of the natural world. And all of a sudden, just by doing that, we have more energy, mm. right? Waking up at the right time, going to bed at the right time. And so that's the mindfulness about how you are interacting with your daily routine. And then Ayurveda also gives us tools for seasonal routines because what you're doing in the winter will be very different than the summer. And that's how we take that awareness from the internal, which is yoga, to then the relationship with nature, which is Ayurveda. So beautiful. I know there's some people are watching and feeling like, wow, I haven't heard that before. I didn't realize that makes so much sense. What I want to ask though, and this is always a big part of our show is what was the thing else? And what was maybe the moment in your life, that personal moment that made you realize that this was how you now needed to live your life? I am very grateful that I was in college at the time. And, you know, I was working two jobs, going to school full time and just had no sense of myself. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And then when I found yoga, it was just this like aha moment, like this, this, this is who I want to be. And this is what I want to do. And I'm so grateful that I've been doing it for 20 years. Now I get to share this with other people. Mm -hmm. And Katie, how about you? Did you have that moment mm -hmm. where yoga just like showed up in life? Oh my gosh. Well, I found it in college and it really helped me get out of my head and into my body during a very toxic time. But then I went to graduate school and I was studying public health. And so we're looking at the chronic disease epidemic, what's happening in our modern environment that's influencing our health behaviors and our health outcomes. And the fact that everyone is well, the, I don't want to say everyone, but most people are living with high amounts of stress that over time is resulting in chronic illness as well as, you know, diet and lifestyle choices. And the public health community at that point in time was like, we don't know how to get people to change their behaviors. It's the million dollar question. People know they shouldn't smoke. They know they shouldn't drink. They know they should do all these things intellectually, but there's a disconnect between their behaviors. And at this point in time, I was in New Orleans in grad school. I was going to a great you know, yoga studio with live music and sweating and feeling so alive and so good in my body. And I was like, wait, yoga addresses the underlying behavioral risk factors associated um, with chronic illness. So mm. we can actually give people tools, you know, how to live safely in their bodies, how to move their bodies, how to manage stress, how to make better choices, actionable tools in day to day life versus the public health model, which is more of, of a didactic, mm. you know, educational information um, approach that clearly wasn't working. So at that point, the light bulb went on and it was like, I'm going to use my public health lens to explain the problem. And then yoga, this system, this ancient holistic healing system as the solution to empower the individual and also create healthier communities. It's so great you share that because my personal story is I found yoga after I had been uh, involved in a, a, an assault and I was going through PTSD and I went to the yoga studio late on the mat, just like you said, Katie, in the dark with the candlelight yoga because I was so still going through grief and shame and blame and all the remorse of being in an assault. And I uh, was really like hiding on my mat, but I was like finding myself on the mat and it was really beautiful. Uh, that studio even had a guitarist come in and play the guitar uh, while we were doing our yoga. And it was like this beautiful, safe space to heal. And so right to what you said, it can be used as a healing modality, truly a healing, healing modality. We don't just do it for fun. and We don't just do it because it's on trend it actually completely helps reset the body on a cellular level. So thank you for letting me share because yoga has been so precious to me also. I'd love to add something on that note. We actually have had courses in trauma-informed yoga. So we've had teachers learn how to teach this style of yoga. 
And a big part of that is learning that we we hold that trauma in our body so that through movement, through breath, through all these tools, we can help to release the stress and release the trauma that we've been holding on to for maybe decades. Mm -hmm. I went on to then do aerial yoga and have some fun with it. <laughs> and then I got into play with it. And then I took a one year yoga challenge where we did yoga every day for a year. And I was like the girl in the studio, like every day, always running in a little late, but always showing up. <laughs> And I just love the community and the other people and the like-mindedness. And really, let's talk about that for a second. The power of community, how a community builds humanity. Katie, go on. Tell us about how powerful community is. <laughs> well, this is our most recent Ignite moment. And it really, we've had so many over the course of our, our relationship and what we do. But during the pandemic, when it was lights out and we watched, I mean, holding a community space, I liken it to having this like, this vortex of energy is swirling around I and mean, everything's alive and it's palpable and people are coming in and they're smiling and they're, it's just, it's so amazing. And then when we had to just turn the lights out, the vortex just went and it was just gone. And we saw what happened during the pandemic when we were at home and we were teaching yoga online at home virtually, but it wasn't the same. It really wasn't the same. And just seeing what that does for people that feel isolated and disconnected and the toll that it takes on their mental health and their physical health and, and all the layers of being are impacted when we're isolated and disconnected from each other. So at that point, Allison and I said, we are going to fight to keep physical spaces open because 40% of yoga studios closed during the pandemic. And it's a lot of work to run a physical space. It takes yeah. a lot of energy and and you question, you're like, well, maybe we can just go online. It's so much more cost effective. But it's like, no, we, mm -hmm. this is our new mission. We're like, we're fighting to keep physical spaces because people need it. They need mm -hmm. to get out of their homes, away from screens. And we watch them transform by coming back together and remembering what it means to be human. So, so true. I mean, I remember doing yoga and hearing other people breathing and breathing together was like this power of the tribe. And then when we would ohm or chant together, it was really incredible. And we had one yoga class where at the very end, when we were all sitting and with our eyes closed and our hands were open, we actually would hold hands with the person beside us. We wouldn't even know who they were. Our eyes were closed. But there was this massive amount of connection, personal touch, knowing, breathing. And I think if you look at all cultures, we dance together, we eat together, we sit by the fire together, you know, we we migrate together, and we've really lost that in modern society. And so this is a truly a great way to bring it back. Well, I love this conversation. I can't wait to come to the studio next time mm -hmm. I'm in LA. And so let us put it up on the screen where people can find you. Katie, tell us how people can get access to you. I know they're going to be clamoring to want to come to one of the classes. What's the best way for them to reach you? Sure. So our website has all of the information, be the change yoga.com. That's all of our classes, which we do live stream. So you are able to attend from anywhere in the world. And then we have all of our trainings, a 200 hour yoga training, a 300 hour and 850 hour yoga therapist training. And so those are hybrid as well. So we now have students around the country and around the globe and then Instagram be the change yoga OC. Fantastic. I love it. So Allison, before we go, just as we wrap up, what would you love to leave people with from you? Your little nugget that you would like to just plant the seed in people who are listening. Yeah, there's so many nuggets. Um, but I think the most important one is slow down and live at the pace of nature, that we're moving so fast all the time, putting too many things onto our schedule. So how can we cut things back, put our feet in the dirt, and just enjoy the beauty around us? Lovely. And Katie, for you? Oh my gosh, I love that. I don't know. I was thinking I was so close to Allison. Um, what <laughs> well, can we leave it. people with? What can we leave people with? I think that we need to remember that there's a better way to live. Mm. You know, that we can, we have the ability to come back to ourselves, that it's, it's always present. We are always here in that we do have the power to change. We have the power to change our lives. We have the power to, to pursue our dreams you know, and do wonderful things. We have the power to shift our relationships. So once we start to do the inner work and change the internal vibration, then everything else shifts externally. And there's so much that is within our control. Amen to that. Well, I love it. And I just want to share before we leave, 
Both of these incredible ladies are a part of the Ignite Humanity compilation book. They will be sharing their stories and really helping move the needle in humanity. They put their hands up to say, yes, they want to be a part of our community to make sure that what they're doing has an impact on the lives of others and they want to share it through our compilation book and many of the things we are doing. I want to say thank you to your both. I love that you're a part of this. I love your message. You've already made me feel so much more wonderful and juicy and relaxed and reminded me of how important it is. And again, I can't wait to see you both in person, give you big hugs, uh, all big hugs by, in, in real life and IRL <laughs> and say thank you both for being here. Thank you. Great. Thank you, JD. All right. Terrific. As you can see, taking care of you is so important and infusing good practices and wellness into your life matters. It doesn't matter how you do it, it's that you do it. So take a little bit of time, as Allison said, just in the morning before you get out of bed, set your day, set your intention. And as Katie shared, just do it in mindfulness and in, and in a way that you're just focusing your one thought, the way you're thinking in a way that's going to benefit you. If you'd like to know more about the ladies, a part of the book, Ignite Humanity, please go to our website. And you too, if you're doing something exciting in humanity, could be a part of that project. We are going to touch every corner of the planet with this book. And we would love if you've got a story about humanity to be a part of that. Now, if you're doing something in the world that feels like it's igniting humanity and you'd like to be on the show, We'll send us a little bit of information on the link below and we would like to reach out to you to see if you can show up and share how you are igniting the lives of others. Now, we're always, always wanting to make what we do accessible to you. Now, many people feel like, I don't know where to go. I don't know how to get started. I don't know what that is. Well, we have made this and every episode that we do free and available to you at our portal on our platform. And we don't retarget you. We don't sell you. We don't ask you for anything. All you have to do is sign in and you can see all of our episodes, all of our shows and listen to our many guests who are sharing about the little things that they do. I want you to know that one thing you've learned today on this show, just going in that direction, 1% will start creating a huge new trajectory in your life and make a massive, massive difference. And so go after that 1%, go after that little tiny incremental move that will make a massive, massive difference. Now we're trying to move the needle in the lives of children. We are building schools overseas. Our first school will be in Indonesia and we're always looking for donations to that. Let's ignite literacy and move the needle in the life of a child, families, teachers, an entire community. When kids are going to school, they're helping their siblings, their family, their parents, their entire village is changing. And so be a part of our project by donating. Every single dollar makes an impact. All of our guests are so beautifully supporting our school by donating. We love the community that we are building by knowing that we can build schools and make a big impact impact on the planet. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this show and all the shows that we do. We want you to feel ignited in your life. We want you to know you know that you can do it. We want you to know that you have the power and we want you to know that you can ignite the life of someone else. So go out today. The moment you step out of your door of your house, know that you have the power to infuse beautiful intention onto another person. So they go out and infuse that onto another person as well. All right. Hugs to you. Take care. We'll see you tomorrow. Now, more than ever, we need to come together to connect with one another. We need to feel the truth in who we are and let go of everything that's happened in the past. We need to empower every person on the planet and awaken hearts, enliven souls, come together, laugh, play, rejoice, connect, create, and love. It's time to ignite humanity. We want you to be a part of something that will impact the future for everyone. We want you to tell your story, share your Ignite moment, show people who you truly are. Be a part of igniting humanity and making a difference in the world and all of our futures. <laughs>